Hello, welcome back to the brand new session of Certified Ethical Hacking Program. And uh, in this session, we are going to start our module six, System Hacking. <laughs> yes, it is very interesting topic, System Hacking. You know, System Hacking is one of the most important and sometimes the ultimate goal of an attacker, right? The attacker acquires information through techniques such as footprinting, scanning, enumeration, and vulnerability analysis, and then uses this information to hack the target system. So this module will focus on the tools and techniques used by the attackers to hack the target system. At the end of this module, we will be able to learn a lot of things like uh, explain, uh, we can explain the different techniques to gain access to the system. We can apply privileges, escalation techniques. We can, uh, you know, we can get the information, different techniques to gain and maintain remote access to the system. We will uh, get the information about different types of rootkits. Uh, we will also get the information about the steganography and stag analysis techniques. We will apply different techniques to hide and evidence of uh, compromise. We will also apply the various system hacking countermeasures and a lot of, a lot of things. So uh, this is all about this particular system hacking module. And let's start our first point, gaining access. So as discussed in module one, the CEH hacking methodology uh, include various steps attackers follow to hack systems. So the following section discuss the these steps in uh, you know greater details. So the first step involves the use of various techniques uh, by attackers to gain access to the target system. And these techniques include cracking password, exploiting buffer overflow and exploiting identified vulnerabilities and so on. So cracking password, if I just talk about cracking password, so there is Microsoft authentication. When user login into the uh, Windows computer, the series of uh, steps are performed for user authentication. Then the Windows OS authenticates its user with the help of three mechanism provided by the Mac Microsoft. So first, uh, you can say the first is security count manager database, that is a uh, SAM. The second will be the NTLM authentication and the third will be the Kerberos authentication. If I just talk about the SAM database, Windows uses the security accounts manager database or active directory database to manage user accounts and password in a, you know, hashed format, right? Uh, the system does not store the password in the plain text format, but in hashed format. To protect them from attackers or maybe the attacks uh, the system implements the same database as a registry file and the windows kernel obtains the uh, keeps an exclusive system uh, lock on the same file so as this file consists of file system lock this provides some measures of security for the strong password so you know it is not possible to copy the same file to another location in the case of online attacks because the uh, system locks the same file with an exclusive file system lock so the user cannot copy or move it while windows is running so the lock does not release until the system throws a blue screen expectations or exceptions uh, or the os has shut down however to make the password hashes available for offline brute force attacks attackers can dump the on disk content of the same file using various techniques so the same file uses a you know c key function in the windows nt 4.0 or maybe the later versions to partially encrypt the password hashes but even even you know even if uh, hackers uh, use uh, you know subterfuge technique to discover the contents the encrypted keys with a one way hash make it difficult to hack so in addition, some versions have a secondary key, which makes the encryption specific to the copy of the OS or maybe the operating system. So this is all about the SAM database. There is second is NTLM. I will just give you the overview that NTLAN manager, that is NTLM, right? NTLAN manager, right? Is a default authentication schemes that performs authentication using a challenge a response strategy so because it does not relay on any official protocol specification there is no guarantee that it uh, works effectively in every situation so it has been used in some windows installation uh, where it successfully worked 
uh, and uh, NTLM authentication consists of two protocols actually. So NTLM authentication protocol and LAN manager authentication protocol. So these protocols use different hash methodologies to store users password in the same database. Same database means SAM database. <clears throat> The last but not the least Kerberos authentication. So it is a network authentication protocol that provides a strong authentication for client server application through secret key cryptography. So this protocol provides mutual authentication in that both the servers and the user verify each other's identity. So messages sent through Kerberos protocol are protected against replay uh, attacks and avoid dropping as well. So Kerberos employs the key distribution center. Uh, which is trusted third party so this consists of two legal uh, logically distinct parts uh, an authentication server that is as and the ticket granting server that is tgs and uh, kerberos use tickets to prove a user identity so microsoft has upgraded its default authentication protocol to kerberos which provides a stronger authentication for client server application than uh, ntlm so yeah that is all about the these three particular microsoft authentication the next point is how hash passwords are stored in Windows uh, SAM or you can say SAM. So Windows operating system use a security account manager database file to store user password. Uh, the same file is stored at uh, you know percent system root percent uh, slash system 32 config SAM as uh, I will you know I will give you this particular uh, file uh, location you can see that on my screen right now. So this will be available in Windows system and Windows mounts it in uh, registry under the HKLM SAM registry here. So it stores LM or NTLM hashes passwords, right? So this is how we can work with that. So NTLM, uh, you know, supersets the LM hashes, which is, uh, you know, susceptible to cracking. And a new version of Windows still support LM hashes for uh, backward compatibility. However, Vista and later Windows versions disable LM hashes by default. So the LM hashes uh, is blank in the newer version of Windows. So selecting the option to remove LM hashes enable an additional check during the password change operation. But you know does not immediately clear LM hash value from the same data file and uh, the, the same uh, file stores a dummy value in its database uh, which bears no relationship to users actual password and it is the same for all user accounts so it is not possible to calculate lm hashes for password exceeding 14 characters in the length thus the lm hash value is set to dummy value when uh, the user or administrator sets a password of more than 14 characters Well, next is NTLM authentication process. So, you know, NTLM includes three methods of challenge response authentication. That is LM, NTLM V1 and NTLM V2. All of which use the same techniques for authentication. The only difference between them is the level of encryption. In NTLM authentication, the client and server negotiate an authentication protocol. This is accomplished through the Microsoft negotiated security support provider that is SSP and uh, yet yeah, the following steps as you can see that on my screen right now the process and the flow of client authentication to the domain controller using any ntlm protocol so the client types uh, the client types the username and password onto the logon window as you can see that then windows runs the password through a hash algorithm and generates a hash for the password that is entered in the logon window and then client uh, computer sends the login request along with the domain name to the domain controller then the domain controller generates 16 byte random character string called a nonce uh, which it sends to the client computer then the client computer encrypts the nonce with the hash of the user password and send it back to the domain controller and the last but not the least the domain controller retrieves the hash of user password from the same and uh, same that means uh, you know SAM and uses it to encrypt the nonce. The domain controller then compares the encrypted value with the value retrieved uh, from the client and the matching value authenticates the clients and the logon will be successful. So Microsoft has upgraded its default authentication protocol to Kerberos which provides a stronger authentication for client and the server application than uh, NTLM but uh, yeah that is a note which I have gave you. 
So the next is Kerberos authentication, which is the third. Uh, so Kerberos is a network authentication protocol that provides a strong authentication for client server application through secret key cryptography, which provides mutual authentication. Both the server and the user verify each other's identity. So messages sent through this protocol are protected against replay attacks and avas dropping. So you know Kerberos employs the KDC, which a trusted third party and consists of two logical distinct parts, as I have told you earlier, S and TGS. So the authorization mechanism of Kerberos provides the user with a ticket granting ticket, right? That serve post authentication for later access to specific services. or you can say single sign on via which the user needs not re enter the password again to access any authorized services notably there is no direct communication between the application servers and the kdc the service tickets even if packed uh, packed by tgs uh, uh, reach the service only the through the client who is willing to access them so that is all about the uh, thrice of that particular sam anti lm or the kerberos authentication now i am going to the next topic that is password cracking so password cracking is the process of recovering the password from the data transmitted by a computer system or from the data stored in it so the purpose of cracking a password might be to help a user recover a forgotten or lost password as a you know preventive measure Uh, by system administrator to check for easily breakable password or for use by an attacker to gain unauthorized system access hacking often begins with the password cracking attempts so the password is a key piece of information necessary to access a system so consequently most attackers use password cracking techniques to gain unauthorized access and uh, and uh, an attacker may either crack a password manually by guessing it or use automatic tools and techniques such as a directory uh, or you can say dictionary or brute force method or something like that so most password cracking techniques are successfully because uh, of weak or easily guessable passwords yes that is a important point that is a type of password attacks so password cracking is a one of the uh, crucial stage of the system hacking because password cracking mechanism often exploit otherwise legal means to gain unauthorized system access such as recovering a user's forgotten password or something like that so classification of the password attacks depends on the attacker's actions which of Uh, which are of the following four types as you can see that on my screen right now non electric attacks this is for most cases the attacker's first attempt at gaining target system password non electronic or non technical attacks do not require any technical knowledge about hacking or system exploitation but techniques used to perform non electric attacks include uh, shoulder surfing social engineering dumpster diving etc etc right then the second uh, uh, attack method is uh, active online attacks so this is one of the easiest way to gain unauthorized administrator level system access here the attacker communicates with the target machine to gain the password access so techniques used to perform active online attacks include password guessing dictionary maybe brute force attack maybe password spraying uh, mask attacks or hash injection or maybe llmnr or you know nbt ns poisoning use of trojans spyware key loggers internal monologues attacks or maybe markov chain attacks maybe kerberos password cracking and there are a lot of uh, you know method which you can use uh, in active online attacks the third is passive online attacks the passive attack is a type of system attack that does not lead to any changes in the system in this attack the attacker does not have to communicate with the system but passively monitor or record the data passing over the communication channel to and from the system so the data are then used to break into the system techniques used to perform passive online attacks include wire sniffing man in the middle attack replay attacks and so on last but not the least offline attacks offline attacks refers to the password attacks in which an attacker tries to recover clear text password from the password hash dump and attackers use pre computed hashes from the rambo tables to perform offline and distributed network attacks well 
the next three slides where i have given uh, maybe four slides where i have given some uh, you know one liner for these particular attacks like first is non electric attacks there are three types of non electric attacks social engineering shoulder surfing and the dumpster diving so as you can see that convincing people to reveal the passwords that is known as social engineering looking at either the user's keyboard or screen while he she is logging so that is shoulder surfing and the last dumpster diving that is searching for sensitive information in the user's trash bins printer trash bins and in on the user's desk or sticky notes as well well if i just talk about active online attacks so you know there are some of the active online attacks which i want to show you that is first is asrep roasting that is attackers request a tgt uh, from the kdc in the form of the ace request packets and crack the tickets to obtain the user's password right and the Kerberos thing is that takers request a TGS for the span of uh, target services accounts and uh, crack the ticket to obtain the user's password you know there is one more thing which I want to show you that is you can see that that is uh, yeah active online attacks pass the ticket attack so if you just see the upper one that is cra cracking the Kerberos password and this is for pass the ticket attacks right so I have mentioned some of the one-liner points which you can just have a look into that part well there are some other active online attacks are there which i have mentioned in my slide and i have also added some one liner for combinator attack fingerprint attack prints attack toggle case attack markov chain attacks and gpu based attacks as well Now in the third one, I have also added passive online attacks like wire sniffing. So the wire sniffing, you know, that is the first one which you can get the details about the wire sniffing because this is a part of passive online attacks. And the last is offline attacks, which you can see I have added three uh, attacks like Rambo table attacks, compare the hashes attack and easy to recover attacks as well. So, you know, I have added all those uh, three kind of uh, or maybe all four kind of uh, attacks that we have discussed earlier. Uh, the first was non electric attacks. The second was active online attacks. Third, passive online attacks. And the last, which we had uh, discussed on offline attacks so the next point is password recovery tools so password recovery tools allow attackers to break complex password recover strong encryption keys and unlock several documents so you know i have added some of the tools like elcom soft distributed password recovery which is a great tool because this password recovery breaks complex password recovers a strong encryption keys and unlocks documents in a production environment as well so that is a nice tool along with that we can uh, use some of the password recovery tools which i have listed in our slide that password recovery toolkit maybe the password kit forensic hash kit, windows password recovery tool pcu uh, or you can say pc unlocker right so these tools we can use in the lab demonstration so do not worry about that but uh, in this particular session we are just covering the theoretical part then next is tools to extract the password hashes so this particular following tools you can use to extract the password hashes from the target system like pwd dump 7 as uh, because that is a nice tool to extract the hashes from the password and this is a windows tool along with that we can use mimic ads powershell empire ds internals powershell then uh, ntd extract as well the use of the above tools requires administrative privileges on the remote system so please if you are using these tools make sure that you are running as a uh, administrator then next is password cracking tools so you know password cracking tools allow you to reset a non or lost windows local administrator domain administrator and other user account password in the case of forgotten password it even allow user instant access to their logged computer without reinstalling windows so you know attackers can use cracking tools to crack the password of the target system so you can see that as uh, in this particular mention in this slide we can use loft crack actually in the loft crack you can see instead of o there is zero in the loft spelling 
and the other tool is off crack obviously we will just go through this particular tools in the lab demonstration particular service when we will create the lab demonstration you will see the hands-on training on these particular tools well then the next is password sorting so password sorting is a technique in which random strings of characters are added to the password before calculating the hashes this makes uh, it more difficult to reverse the hashes and helps in defeating the pre-computed hash attacks so the longer the random strings the harder it becomes to break or crack the password so the random strings of characters should be combination of alphanumerical characters in cryptography a salt consists of random data bits used as an input to a one-way function the other being password so instead of passwords the output of the one-way function can be stored and used to authenticate users so the salt combines with a password by a key uh, you know de derivation function to generate a key for use with a cipher or other cryptographic algorithm so this technique generates different hashes for the same password which renders password cracking difficult yes in the last of the training uh, the participant asked me about how to defend against the password cracking so yes we have also added the slide you know the best practice to protect against the password cracking uh, is you can enable the information security auditing to monitor and track the password attacks do not use the same password during a password change restrict the uh, use of similar password and the past uh, you know patterns of multiple accounts then do not share the password do not use password that can be found in a dictionary do not use clear text protocol or protocols with a weak encryption like http then uh, you can set the password change policy to 30 days you can avoid these strings or you know you can avoid uh, storing passwords in an uh, in an uh, you know unsecured location you can uh, you do not use any systems default passwords you know make password difficult to guess by using 8 to 12 alpha, alphanumerical character with a combination of uppercase and lowercase numbers symbols etc this is because the stronger passwords are harder to crack therefore the more complex the password the less vulnerable it is to attacks ensure that the application neither uh, you know neither uh, store password in a memory uh, nor write them to the disk in clear password are always vulnerable to theft uh, if they are stored in memory once the password is unknown it is extremely easy for takers to escalate their rights in the application you know so there are total 15 points which i have added in my slides there are some more you need to use a random strings salt as a password prefix or suffix before performing encryption uh, you know you can enable the sys key with a strong password then you can lock out accounts that were subjected to the access uh, you know excessive numbers of incorrect password many password sniffers can be successful if a LAN manager and ntlm authentication will be used you can also perform a periodic audit of password in the organization so you know there are a lot of things which you can add in your uh, you know password policies so as of now i have added 15 points which you can have a look in my slide as well okay so the second point in the gaining access as i have told you earlier the the gaining access was the first step in which we had discussed the first point cracking password but now this is the second point vulnerability exploitation right vulnerability exploitation so uh, this involves the execution of multiple complex interrelated steps to gain access to the remote system so attackers can perform exploitation only after discovering the vulnerabilities in that particular target system and attacker use discovered vulnerabilities to develop exploits and deliver and execute the exploits on the remote systems so there are some steps which are uh, involved in this particular vulnerability exploitation that is identify the vulnerability determining the risk associated with the vulnerability determining the capacity of the vulnerability develop the exploit ex uh, select you need to select the method for delivering local or maybe the remote generating and delivering the payloads and gain remote access so basically you know this is all about the uh, steps which are involved or you can say uh, in the vulnerability exploitation right so let's have a quick look into the each and individual site 
so the first point is exploit sites right so attackers can use various exploit sites such as exploit database world db etc to discover vulnerabilities and download or develop exploits to perform remote exploitation on the target system and these sites include details of the latest vulnerabilities and exploits so you can just go through this particular websites like exploit sites that is a nice tool or maybe the you know cve is there or vulners are there so there are a lot of uh, you know google hacking database is also there so you know there are a lot of uh, you know websites where you can get the updated vulnerabilities uh, on the websites well the next is buffer overflow right a buffer is an area of uh, adjacent memory locations allocated to the program or application to handle its runtime data buffer overflow or uh, overrun is common vulnerability in the applications or programs that accept more data than the allocated buffer so this vulnerability allows the application to access the buffer while writing data to the buffer and overwrite neighboring uh, memory locations so this vulnerability leads to erratic system behavior system crash memory access errors etc and uh, attackers exploit a buffer overflow vulnerability to inject malicious code into the buffer to the damage files modify the program data access critical information escalate privileges gain shell access and so on so you know this is all about the buffer overflow well this is the next one return oriented programming rop attacks so you know that is uh, related with the uh, programming which is an exploitation technique used by attackers to execute arbitrary malicious code in the presence of security protections or you can say protections such as code signing and executable space protection so using this technique an attacker hijack the target program control flow by gaining access to the call stock and then executes arbitrary machine instructions by reusing available libraries known as gadgets so gadgets are a collection of instruction that end with the x86 uh, you know red instructions the attacker select a chain of existing gadget to create a new program and execute it with the malicious infections so the attacker can also perform code branching and search for conditions such as equal less than and greater than on program data so rop attacks are very effective as they utilize available and legal code libraries which are not identified by security protections such as code signing and executable space protection well the next is exploit chaining so exploit chaining also referred to as a vulnerability chaining as well right because it is a cyber attack that combines various exploits or vulnerabilities to infiltrate uh, and compromise the target from its root level so exploit chaining is a sophisticated attacking mechanism in which an attacker first in uh, you know initiates uh, reconnaissance operations then the attacker starts enumerating various digital footprints and underlying vulnerabilities sequentially within a, the software or hardware of the target system so after uh, you know identifying the vulnerabilities the attacker initially gain uh, access to the target network using any technology and exploitation tool that they believe to have a best probability of success so then they go deeper into the network using the list of identify exploits they can also map out a you know major portion of the activity before connecting to the targeted system digitally and uh, with the successful exploitation of vulnerabilities an attacker gain kernel root system level access to the launch further attacks throughout the network without being detected by security solution so while this type of attack consumes relatively more time and efforts during the initial phases chaining exploits together allows attackers to launch attacks that are more difficult to remediate as the length and depth of the uh, exploit chain grows you know so yeah organizations face considerable risk because of exploit chains because you know exploit chains are typically carried out swiftly and uh, most business lack of the necessary playbooks policies and resources to effectively block or limit the threat so you know exploit chains leverage known vulnerability to form chains which puts IDSs at a risk as they cannot be identified and mitigated easily. So yeah, this is all about which we had discussed about the gaining access uh, in which we discussed about the cracking password and the vulnerability exploitation as well.